well once used as an actual military training base, Minter Field in Shafter is brimming with history. That's right. Josh Helmuth is live from Minter Field right now at the Minter Field Air Museum, showcasing it as today's Kern County Hidden Gem Josh. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It's not every day you get to sit inside a 1941 GMC fire truck, World War II era. I tell you what, this is just something that's incredibly neat. I feel like I'm going back in time. Ronald Pierce is with me as I step out of this thing. This thing is unbelievable. We have a few. We have an array of beautiful World War II era vehicles here at the Minter Field Air Museum. I'm so excited to be here. Before we go into the history, tell me what we have right here. This is all just uh, one of the, some of the finest displays you have here on location. We have a, a uh, 40s uh, G, uh, Plymouth that actually, it's a staff car that was at Gardner Field in Taft during World War II. And th these things, they're tanks. They I mean, are. that's just. They are. It's an original <laughs> engine. It's a flathead six. Uh, still runs on six volts instead of 12 volts. The air conditioner, you have to roll the windows down. Wow. And this, and this World War II era Jeep, these things had a really cool purpose. This Jeep out here, the yellow Jeep, was at Meadows Field during the war. It had, it had a great big sign on the back, and it still does. It was a follow me Jeep. They would take uh, the Jeep out there when an airplane would come in and they wouldn't know exactly where to park. They would go out there and lead them in. We have it completely restored, and it's, it's our uh, follow me <laughs> yellow Jeep. And when you think an airfield or just uh, a military history, you normally don't think fire trucks. Explain why you have this. We have this because Shafter wants to keep uh, things uh, up to date and are, are in good running condition. Uh, we were able to talk them into loan it to us and we maintain it for the Shafter and keep it in running condition. When we, the military chose this place for a, for a training ground, they also built their own fire station as part of this facility, right? Yes. Okay. When, during the 30s, they came in and looked at places to, to build an air base that they could train pilots. They came in and told everybody that they were looking for a AAA uh, place to, <laughs> to put an office, and they were actually looking for an air base. Yeah, this AAA facility, by the way, will take up uh, hundreds of acres. Um, it'll cost uh, millions of dollars. <laughs> That's right. And they came in and purchased the land uh, the, it's right at Lerdo and Highway 99. When they first came in, they housed uh, their, their top personnel and stuff at BC and Bakersfield College, which was actually at Bakersfield High School. It really is phen uh, phenomenal. I had no idea. And well, I, I had a, a little glimmer of an idea recently, but not until this morning, of just how much of a mecca shafter is to the Central Valley in regards to World War II history. I mean, it was really a pivotal uh, uh, role player in the war, Shafter was. That's correct. Uh, we, we graduated over 11,000 cadets to go fight for uh, peace in Europe and Japan out of Minter Field. Wow. Uh, we also had a Japanese uh, concentration camp in Shafter and uh, Shafter is, is well known for uh, its history. And guys, Ronald's father actually worked here at Minter Field during the war. He remembers being here as a little boy with his father, helping him during the war effort. Everyone played a huge role in the war effort. It doesn't matter what your career was back in the 1940s. But if you were here between 41 and 45, you were doing something to help us win that war. One really cool factoid about these vehicles, if you look closely, Ronald just pointed this out to me, and all the vehicles during, uh, during the war, they had a letter. It was A, B, C, or D, is that right, Ronald? That's correct. And this has an A right here, and that pretty much determined uh, your gas card, if you will, your, your gas rights. You could fill up a certain amount uh, each week or each month. Each month. Each month, and then once you're out, you're out. Because, of course, a lot of that gasoline had to go towards the war effort. Just one neat little fact what I'm learning here this morning. We're just getting started. Don't go anywhere. Shafter, our, our richest part of Kern County when it comes to World War II history. We're going to learn a lot here this morning. Guys, back to you. Wow, we've already learned a lot. Josh, thank you. This is very interesting. Exciting you stuff, bet. Josh. Thank you. That's Josh Helmuth. Interesting seeing you out there. But now, are you ready to take flight? 
No, oh, well, I tell you what, I, I was having a little fun during our tease while ago. Uh, inside this plane, you're going to learn a lot more about, I really don't know what it is, I just know it's like a training uh, type plane used during World War II. Ronald here is with me to explain. Inside one of the hangars here at Minter Field. Uh, Ronald, what do we have here inside this hangar? That's a VT-13. They had about 400, 450 of these airplanes sitting out here at Minter Field wow. during the war. They had 200 flying at any, at any one time. And before it they was, headed out over to Europe, this is what they would train in? They would train here to be a pilot uh, and then go on from this to fighter planes or bombers. And what do, what do we have over here in the corner here? Because we have some really neat replicas. Okay, clear back here in the corner, the all red tri-wing tri is a Falker DR-1. It's a German. The Red Baron flew one of these airplanes in uh, World War One, and it's wow. a replica of, of the Red Baron wow. triplane German airplane. And what about the silver the thing right here? Silver and red <laughs> one is a Turner. Uh, Mr. Turner designed it. It actually, uh, the wings fold up. He used to put it on a trailer and take it home and put it in his garage at night. And then when he wanted to fly, he'd, he'd take it to the airport, un unfold the wings and fly it. Now guys, I want to show you something really special right now. This is probably the coolest thing I've been uh, uh, shown while at Minter Field probably throughout the entire morning. This right here is, wh what do you call this again? I, I want to, a tug. A tug. Is, I, I, I want to call it a, like a, a, a tugger. It's just a tug. A 1941 Clark aircraft tug to be pre precise. Explain to our audience why this is here and why this is an important piece of history. This, this tug actually was shipped from uh, Clark Manufacturing to Wheeler Field in Hawaii prior to the Pearl Harbor attack and it was actually on Wheeler Field during the attack. And we actually have someone from Kern County who probably, come to find out, drove this very same tug at Wheeler. He was a tug driver at Wheeler Field. We have pictures, we have signed, autographed on the tug, uh, his autograph, we have documents that shows when it was made, when it was shipped, and where it was shipped to. And it, it's a tug that they pull the airplanes around, the bombers and airplanes. The fenders weigh about 500 pounds a piece on it so that they're heavy enough so that they say. I was gonna LJ can you come over here on camera normally when you see metal you know you normally knock on it you hear like a, a tinny sound or at least some kind of metal sound no it's like it's like solid concrete one of these weighs 500 pounds why is that it's so that they can have enough weight on the tires and the rear tires so that when they hook up to a BT uh, a uh, B29 or a B17 that the tires don't spin when they want to pull it to, to have it repaired. They usually use a tug to pull the airplanes around so they don't have to start them up to do repairs or different things on them. And James was kind of like the ex expertise here. You can kind of barely see the autograph uh, of the local native that signed this, who drove this back during Pearl Harbor. Do you know his name and where he's from? I can't remember what we're going to get that information for you back in the next segment. But guys, again, we have one more segment coming up here from Mentor Field. Actually, do we have two more? We have two more segments from Mentor Field. Two more. Uh, dos mas. And uh, yeah, if you love history, you love, you appreciate our veterans, this is the place to be right here in Kern County. All right. Nice. Mentor Field Air Museum open every Friday and Saturday from 10 to 2. Amity and Rob, see this flag behind me? Do you notice anything special about this flag? It's missing, uh, it's missing some stripes. And some stars. stars. Uh, the correct answer would be there's 48 stars. Pre-World pre -World War II flag to have right here. Pretty Amazing. cool stuff. Good morning. Good morning, Josh. And what a great Good way morning. to honor our veterans like you have been doing all morning. And that's exactly what we're about to do right now. Specifically, we've been showcasing Minter Fields Air Museum all morning, whether it was the planes out on the hangar or the World War II exhibit. This entire field was created because the Army wanted a training facility uh, away from Los Angeles in case, you know, something were to happen, they would actually have a lot of space to land. Um, well, one of those veterans who trained here during World War II is right here with me, Don Westfall. Don, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for serving our country. Thank you. Don, for those who may not even were aware this was an actual training facility for World War II, what was it like when you were here back in 1944? Well, it, the base itself was, was very busy. Uh, the, the cadets uh, were treated very well here. Um, our barracks, uh, like normal barracks, was all open on the inside. 
well, our barracks was always all partitioned off and proven to four. We had very good facilities. We had very good uh, food. Uh, the weather was wonderful com compared to the weather that was uh, previous to when we got here. And they, they helped thousands of pilots come out of here for the war. Was there like a big sense of urgency when you were here? Yes, there was. So uh, I think they were trying to get uh, pilots trained so they would have pilots who uh, train uh, at the end of the war. Um, fortunately, of course, it, uh, the war ended. If you had a, f a favorite memory about Mentor Field during that time, what would it be? Well, I think meeting my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you, he met his wife here at Mentor Field uh, after he got out of the Army, came back. They were married in Texas, right? And you settled down here in Kern County. Well, I was raised in Oklahoma, but we came back out here after uh, after World War II. Uh, I got out of World War II. And, of course, in World War II, you were actually stationed in India. Um, now you're uh, wise, I'm sure even wise beyond your years to this day, but tell people why they should still come out and visit Mentor Field, even though it's not even a training facility anymore. There's still a lot of rich history here. We have a lot of rich history here. We have a World War I uh, display that's wonderful. We have many artifacts of World War II. Uh, we have uh, various artifacts of various uh, countries, uh, various peoples. Uh, it's just, and we have a, a display on the space, uh, all the space stuff. Uh, we have a display on the U-2 that was built in Bakersfield, and many people don't know that. The, the history just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? It does. Uh, the facility that was built, uh, where they built the U-2, is still available. It's still being used. Don, again, thank you for serving our country. Really appreciate it. Thank you very Guys, much. we have one more segment from right here in Mentor Field Air Museum. Don't go anywhere. It's been a great morning. They're open from 10 to 2 every Friday and Saturday. All right, thank you, Josh, for being out there this morning. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. I'm at a hidden gym, literally kind of inside a hidden gym right now. I am inside a 1930s pre-World War II flight simulator. Didn't even know one of these existed. It actually feels like I'm flying right now, trying to stay on the horizon. I'm going to open this up so you can see me. Hopefully, I don't hit the light up here. And I'm starting to turn. I need to get back on the, on the lever here. Okay, I got to... Even this puppy back out. This is actually really hard to steer. Randy here is with me at the Minter Airfield Museum. Randy, this has got to be one of the coolest things you have here at the museum. It's exciting and it's exciting to get a thing to work like we have. The instrument panel is 100% of a T6 trainer, and it, it was a, a must for pilots back in the early days to learn how to fly by instruments because of the weather conditions and other conditions that they flow. They crashed, killed a lot of people, hurt a lot, a lot of airplanes. So I, I figured I figured flight simulators were something that was like a new technology. I cannot believe they had this back here in the, in, the, in the 30s. This is what they actually would have trained on here at Mentor Field back in World War II? That's correct. And we had over 11,000 uh, cadets that, that was uh, trained here in Mentor Field. And over how 5,000 of them were trained on overall links. Explain to our audience the gauges, what I'm looking at right now. Well, we have a, we have a altitude, a airspeed, level, a climb, radio compass on the directions, and the, uh, in the uh, field gauge. And it all represents flying correctly. How in the world did you get this thing to work this great? This thing is, you know, older than almost everyone in this in this room. <laughs> a, lot of a lot of book work and a lot of hit and misses. <laughs> a lot of hit and misses, a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Uh, why should people come visit the Mentor Field Air Museum? I mean, obviously, it's it's a hidden gem, but uh, gosh, there's so many great things about this place that we should let our audience know about. We have here at the museum things of interest of all sorts of things during World War II and World War I. We have display up there in front that's fantastic and the and the entrance and the link is just part of it overall the museum is just 100 percent worthwhile coming out and looking at and see what it was like in those days randy james guys everybody i just want to say thank you for having me out here um ronald i really appreciate it and don back there don thank you so much uh if you're at home come out and say hi to these guys they are terrific at what they do uh, and come, come out and uh, support your veterans huh i'm gonna see if i can put this puppy you know make a little turn here i'm not sure I, i'm climbing why am i climbing i don't know what to do i need some i need some help i need some more training guys i'm going to close this thing and hopefully uh, get better at my flight skills amity rob
Back to you. Josh, that is honestly so cool. I'm so like that, like an old school flight simulator. I know, simulator. Really actually, cool. and I was really worried. I was like, how did he get in it, and yeah. will he ever get out? I mean, it looks one of those rides you see outside a supermarket where you play, play like a quarter right. for your child to go and do it. It's really cool, Right, though. but actually helped us win a war. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, that training was so important because, you know, it was sort of a, a new thing yeah. back, especially World War One. those planes. Wow. Um, but check it out in Shafter, Minterfield. Josh Elmoff is out there all morning for us. It is now 8.51.